as much as your surgeon matters and how aggressive they are matters and what kind of machine they're using matters, what matters more than probably anything is your anatomy. What's up, Dr. Patel here, chin lipo expert, and today I'm talking to those patients who've probably been doing a lot of research on chin lipo. If it's something you're interested in doing, you're probably online and learning there's so many variables from what kind of lipo you get to who you get it from to how much you're paying. Now, check out this video here if you wanna learn a little bit more about how to choose a lipo surgeon and learn about the different types of lipo. What this video is about is talking about anatomy and how your anatomy affects those results. And that's kind of the truth. As much as your surgeon matters and how aggressive they are matters and what kind of machine they're using matters, what matters more than probably anything is your anatomy. And as a surgeon, what I want to do is kind of walk you guys through what I think about when I'm looking at different patients. And that's all anatomy. Now, there's some main things that we're looking at with anatomy. Our neck is a complex structure. Luckily, what we're dealing with is the outside structures here from the skin to the muscle and the fat in between. Now, let's talk a little bit about the basics. The way I like to describe the neck anatomy is like a teepee, but upside down. Now, what we're gonna talk about first is the base and foundation of this teepee. The, that base is your mandible or your jawbone, and the strength, width, and length of this bone is gonna really frame your neck. If you don't have that strong of a jawbone, you're gonna notice that sometimes the results aren't gonna be as strong or good. I don't care who your surgeon is, but that's a limiting factor, especially talking about two particular areas. The first is gonna be the angle of the mandible or the corner of your jaw. The shape of this is gonna be more important than anything. For some people, think of a green beret who's got a chiseled jawline, the bone actually juts outwards. And if that's the case, it's really easy to do a little bit of lipo below it and get that definition in the corner. Now in other people's, it curves inside and I can't even get my finger behind it. And for those patients, I usually counsel them that no matter how aggressive I do the lipo, I'm not gonna be able to get that contour around it. I'll try my best, but that's gonna be a limiting factor. Now more importantly than anything is the anterior central part of your jaw, commonly known as your chin. Some people will come in for lipo and I'll tell them that's not even what they need. If when you lose weight, you don't see an improvement in that area, or for a lot of people they say it's genetic, a lot of the time it's just your chin. Bringing that chin forward kind of takes what would be a very, very narrow foundation and expands it, pulling that fat forward. You can see in this lovely patient over here, we were able to get amazing results by just pulling that area forward without having to really remove a lot of fat, if at all any. Now, when you combine the two of those, you can get amazing results, but sometimes more important than the lipo is bringing that area forward for more permanent results. Now, continuing down the TP at the very tip, we have a really important structure called the hyoid. Now, this is gonna be something I can't control, you can't control, but it's something to be aware of. This structure seen right here is gonna be the base or the very top of your voice box. Obviously I can't lipo through that or reposition your voice box, but what we want is we want one that's gonna be very high and posterior. Kind of like in this patient right here where despite a lot of weight, when that bone is far back and I can contour all the way to that, you're gonna get a high and tight jawline. When it's really far forward, or low more importantly, it looks like there's some fat left behind like in this patient, but what it really is is that bone is low and I can't go beyond that. Now, that bone we can utilize and alter in certain ways, and this is where going to an expert surgeon makes a difference. There's a muscle that's in between the fat and that bone called the platysma. This is the muscle that when you flex your neck, like this, you can see. And how we manage this muscle, especially as people get older or have a baseline anatomy where it's not as tight to the hyoid bone, we really have to try to work on. The way we do this is either by stitching that platysma to the hyoid bone, or on certain circumstances, we can tighten it by getting the skin to attach to that muscle to really bring it in. Now, platysma is a really important thing to consider because a lot of surgeons will say if you get too aggressive on lipo, you can see the platysma. Now, I have found that when you tell patients, hey, 
this muscle might show, but it's gonna be the difference between good results and great results. And more importantly, you're only gonna see it when you look high in the sky and stretch your skin over that so that the muscle is peeking through, you can really get a snatched result. Now the downside is when you are looking up, you'll be able to see that, and sometimes that can make you look a little bit older, but how often are patients really concerned about what they look like with this? It's certainly a trade-off where you can't get both unless you do less aggressive lipo, but I would say for the vast majority of my 30-year-old patients, they would prefer to have a more snatch result with some platysmal show and or banding than the other way around. Now last piece of anatomy to talk about is possibly the one of the most important and the biggest variables to the surgery, and that is gonna be a patient's skin quality. There's two really important factors. There's laxity and elasticity. Laxity is gonna be how loose it is. If we look in this patient over here, you're gonna be able to see She's in her 50s, which isn't an ideal age to do lipo, but she elected to go ahead and remove the fat, knowing that the skin was gonna be a little bit left over at the end. Now, it's not the worst thing to have the leftover skin, and that happens with laxity, but for the vast majority of patients, by decreasing the area, you're actually able to have more area for the skin to lie down in, and you're gonna tighten it. Now. Some people are gonna have such extra skin that that's not a possibility, like in this lady, and you're gonna notice that the extra skin can be bothersome. Now, with a slight amount of laxity, there's things we can do to improve it. The first is gonna be adherence to the platysma, and the second is gonna be micro skin tightening postoperatively by using radio frequency skin tightening treatments, such as profound radio frequency, secret radio frequency, or any other type of skin tightening non-surgical treatment. Finally, we have elasticity. Elasticity is really gonna be important when we're talking about removing large amounts of fat. So in a patient like this, when we're removing a larger amount of fat, we want the skin to bounce back. The younger you are, the more elasticity you have. Certain patients can be young and not have great elasticity, but that's important for your surgeon to assess ahead of time and let you know. When you don't have great elasticity and you remove a lot of fat, you can end up with what I call crepey skin, or skin that when you pinch, you can see some fine wrinkles. If you have that beforehand, so you go like this and you pinch and you see a whole bunch of wrinkles, you're in your mid-30s, you're very likely to have some crepiness afterwards. Now, in the end of the day, to me, what's most important is you understand all of these possible outcomes before you have surgery. And it's an expert surgeon that's gonna give you an idea from showing you hundreds of before and afters as to what kind of result you can expect. Just taking out fat is the simple part. Explaining to the patients what can happen and how to best address those situations is what makes one an expert chin liposurgeon. Hopefully this information was useful. We wish you luck finding a great surgeon for your chin lipo. And if you have any questions or would like to set up a consult, reach out to our office. Girl, you're something like a phenomenon. We can hold hands, walk in the promenade. If you with it, then I'm with it. Be my missus, I ain't kidding. Yeah. No time for the blase block.